Hey friends, I hope everyone has had a fantastic holiday season. It's not over yet. New Year's Eve is tomorrow. I'm posting this on December 30th. Hopefully you're watching today, but if you're watching in the future, happy new year, happy 2024, wishing you all the wonderful things in the coming year. This is my December fragrance awards. I've been doing these for several years now. There's a playlist in the description box. If you'd like to binge watch all of the monthly awards from the previous months and years, it is when I give you the fragrances that I wore over the past month in some faux award categories, just to tell you how I feel about them and for entertainment purposes. Now, two things. One is that the year in review fragrance awards will post tomorrow, December 31st. So be sure to catch that. And if you notice, there are a lot of fragrances and discovery sets and other things behind me that are part of a subscriber giveaway. I've posted the video about, a, well, it wasn't a week ago, was it? Sometime this past week. And the giveaway for this is open through this coming Wednesday, January 3rd. So if you're interested in being part of the giveaway, check out this video with this thumbnail. I'll link that in the description box as well. And there is a Google form that you're asked to fill out to tell me what you're interested in. You have to watch the video to see what is in the giveaway. All right, let's get to the December awards. So I've been batting a thousand several months in a row here with the fragrances that I've selected. I have a beautiful bunch to share with you today. Do I have any actual failures? No, everything in here is something that I would recommend for you all to try just to varying degrees. So the first category is the best for the season. You'll see this one in tomorrow's video also. And I am going with Bronzo from Omnia Profumi. This is the fragrance that I wore the day after Christmas and quite frankly have been spritzing here and there. This is a secondhand bottle that I got off of Mercari and is an old bottle design, which I really like. The newer bottle designs for Omnia Profumi are these sort of apple shaped, I'm looking to see if I have something similar to it here. I don't an apple shaped bottle that is also substantial and quite nice. And I'm not sure if this fragrance has been discontinued or moved into the new bottle design. I don't really know. I can tell you that this fragrance is the perfect, perfect Christmas fragrance. I got a ton of cloves and cinnamon here along with amber and vanilla and some sweetness in the fragrance. This felt so bright and happy to wear. This is everything that I wanted. Kenzo Jungle L'Elephant to be, which a lot of people find to be a beautiful spice bomb of a fragrance. I found that one to be a little bizarre for me. There were some uh, notes in there that felt a little bit overwhelming, overpowering for my personal taste. So this is like a subdued version of that, leaning in a more sweet direction, leaning a little bit more in like the angel share cinnamony, you know, spicy type of direction. This was fun to put on. It felt like... I don't quite remember what the fragrance smelled like, but remember Cinnabar from is it Estee Lauder? It was in that neighborhood in terms of the spice effect, but just nice and round and bright and just fun. I felt fun and ladylike and like I was in the winter of 1985 with this fragrance on. Fantastic. Category of everyday fragrance. I actually forgot to bring the bottle downstairs to the filming room with me. It's three stories up and I just don't feel like running upstairs to grab it. So here is the photo of it. It's called First Snow from Victorinox Swiss Army. Victorinox Swiss Army. I think I just called it Victorinox last time. Swiss Army knives, same, same company. This fragrance was so fun yet light and simple and pretty. It's eucalyptus and white tea at the top. So you get this sort of fresh, like minty type of accord. There's a little bit of a floral aspect and there's tonka bean and musk throughout the fragrance. So it's sweet and it's musky and it has this like bright minty feel and is also kind of comforting, not overwhelming, a nice little scent bubble. I wore this to my orthodontist appointment. By the way, I'm done with my Invisalign treatment, yay! Are my teeth, you know, spot on perfect? No. Am I happy with them? Yes. <laughs> I'm happy just to be able to smile again. Quick, uh, you know, quick sidebar. I don't know if you all have noticed for the past year, I haven't really had like a full smile in my videos. I've been kind of talking to you all like this because when you wear Invisalign, you get those little like nubs. I forget what they called them, but they put them on there to hook the aligners onto a whole nother conversation for another day. But I'm done with the treatment and I'm happy. And I wore this fragrance to my orthodontist office and the ladies in there commented that I smelled nice, that I smelled fresh and clean and pretty. This is a great day-to-day, -day, everyday fragrance, especially here in the winter when you want to smell like the name sounds, first snow, 
bright and fresh. It reminds me a little bit of Soleil Neige from Tom Ford without the citrus factor. This one is like minty with floral and a little tea and the musky sweetness to it that's just really delightful. And you all, this is an affordable gem. I found this fragrance for under $20 on Joma Shop. If you'd like to shop for it, there is an affiliate link in the description box below. You don't pay anything extra to shop any of those links, but I'm an affiliate with four different fragrance online stores that are in the description box. Please feel free to shop through there if you so please. In the category of special occasion is a fragrance that I have loved since the beginning of my channel. I found out about this fragrance a long time ago from Miss Sheree Lewis here on YouTube. And the way she described it, I knew that I had to have it. And it was, I think my first Tiziana Terenzi fragrance. So it took me down that whole rabbit hole. And this is now one of my favorite houses. I probably have somewhere between like 15 and 20 fragrances from Tiziana Terenzi. This is Spirito Fiorentino. And the way that Sheree described it was like Baccarat Rouge 540 with leather, like a little bit you know, more mature, a little bit sexier, a little bit more. And I agree, this is super duper good. I, I don't get as much BR 540 from this as perhaps I did at the beginning. And that's just because I've tried so many different fragrances now that this sort of stands on its own. But you definitely get that like airy leather type of feeling from Saffron here. There's definitely leather in the fragrance. There's a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of woodiness. It's a very mysterious sort of commanding fragrance. And it's both substantial and strong and can be a little bit cloying. And it's also super airy at the same time, which is just like an interesting juxtaposition of accords in the fragrance. Love the bottle, the color of it. And I find this to be an alluring fragrance. My husband loves this on me. He didn't at first, but he's grown to really enjoy this. And he actually picked this out for date night one night this month. And so this is to me a special occasion fragrance that could be for date night, but also for special events. When you really want to stand out, you want to have a unique fragrance that is different from the crowd. I can nearly guarantee you that there aren't going to be many people that smell like this. Maybe people that are wearing BR540 have hints of this. But like I said, this isn't, I can't really compare those two fragrances anymore. This sort of stands on its own because of that sort of soft, kind of suede even leathery accord in the fragrance that I think is just really like intoxicating. So special occasion. In the category of sexiest fragrance is another one that I have had for a very long time. This is not made anymore and you would probably have to hunt it down on the internet if you're interested in it. It is Tom Ford Black Orchid, but it is the Voile de Fleur flanker of it. One that probably had my husband proposing to me. <laughs> One that I wore on date nights be before we were married and before he proposed. And he was always wanting to come in closer, snuggle, and was just really like, intrigued by this fragrance, wanting to have more of it. He was, was like, what is it that you're wearing? And I think it just turned him on. It's one of those fragrances. If you know Black Orchid, you know it is one of the most polarizing fragrances of all time. People either love that, the original, or they hate it. Most people are not in the middle, like they're on one end of the spectrum. I am a Black Orchid lover. And that fragrance, the DNA is in here along with uh, a softened up effect from florals. There are a lot of florals here, gardenia, a lang, -a -lang an orchid, which is a, a fantasy note. I think there's a lily note and a few others but it does have that black orchid DNA, which is this sort of earthy, almost like a mushroomy smell, earthy patchouli, sandalwood. I don't know, something super like alluring and dark and vampire mysterious about black orchid with some of those florals to add some femininity to this. So it is a very mysterious type of fragrance, definitely on the mature side. I would say this is like old school perfumery at its best, even though this isn't an old school fragrance. It has sort of a, a vintage allure in the sense that when you think about your 80s and your 90s powerhouse fragrances, where the person that wore the fragrance owned the room, this is that kind of fragrance. Voile de Fleur, absolutely intoxicating fragrance. The next category is the biggest surprise, and I'm going to give this one to Winter of 99 from Kerosene. The reason that it's a surprise is because when I first wore it, I found it to be a little bit overwhelming. I wasn't sure if I really sort of vibed with it. I found it like interesting enough to keep around. I didn't want to get rid of it. I was like, hmm. But the description at the moment didn't match my experience with it. Very long lasting, very strong fragrance. I recently featured this in a video that was like, I think it was the longest lasting 
fragrances or something like that, beast mode fragrances. And this definitely is one. And I mentioned in there that I still like the jewelry was still out for me. And a couple of folks commented about their experience of it. And I wanted to share the notes from the perfumer. And I wanted to say that I have picked these up since then. And that is the surprise that I've worn it and really grown to like this a lot. I can't say it's a deep love, but it's a strong like at this moment. And maybe the key was to wear it in more cold weather where it sort of evokes the warmth and comfort that the perfumer intended. So the notes are smoldering vanilla. So you think about like a smoky vanilla woods, woodiness, right? Molasses and molasses can be, it gives across um, almost like, like, a, like a hardened thick syrupy smell and nutmeg, nutmeg. And so I can comfortably say now that I pick up all of that in the fragrance. It was fun to give it a full day wear here in sweater weather conditions where I think it's intended to be worn. It's supposed to evoke walking into a warm home where there are molasses cookies, like a log home, right? Think about an old school cabin, old log home with molasses cookies. There's some sweetness in the air, but there's also maybe smoke from like a, one of those old school wood stoves that you might have in your family room, the big metal ones, if you will. There's cookies going, there's just warmth in the air and you're happy to sort of snuggle up with a cup of tea or coffee or something. I, I get it, I get it now and that's the surprise of this and I can say now that I enjoy it and it has matured into that. In fact, I would love to see what it would be like to layer this with bronzo, with that cinnamon and clove. That might be a really like nuclear combination here as it gets even colder in the winter. So winter of 99, biggest surprise in a good way. In the category of best bottle, you know, I love me a good nest bottle. There's something about the artwork on them that I think is just particularly inviting and fun and flirty. And I got to give it to the new lychee rose. Or do you say lychee? Because I recently discovered, thanks to Google, <laughs> that lychee is a British pronunciation and lychee tends to be how the rest of the world pronounces it. So however you say it, it's right. You're good to go. But how pretty is this bottle? You will see this again in an upcoming uh, Beauties, New Beauties video where I talk about this and some other new fragrances, including the new Dior J'adore Lore or Dor, whatever the new one is by Francis Kirkjean. It's a hit. I love it for me. We'll talk about that during that video, but look how pretty this is. This is like a pink lover's dream, super girly. Look at that and look at the back, look at it. <laughs> I love that Nest puts one design inside and then another little cute touch back there in the back. This is everything rose, champagne, and lychee or lychee, which is sort of a bright tart fruit. I don't always love that in fragrances. It's a little sour feeling for me in some fragrances, but it works in here. This is a bright, fun, fresh, again, flirty, flirty bottle, flirty fragrance kind of uh, perfume. This, this is good. It's good, good. Moderate projection, moderately long lasting, not forever, but I'm okay with that. And I just love seeing this little piece of artwork on my shelf. I think it is so super cute. Go nest. Love it. Highly recommend this if you like rose, if you like an effervescent note in a fragrance, and if you like the idea of that sort of tart slash sour lychee note, it works really well in here, the whole combination of it. Really good. I don't have a worst bottle for the month of December. All the bottles are interesting or pretty enough to stay out of that. So I replaced that category for this month with worth hunting down. And I got to give it to the gorgeous Patchouli Aromatique from the Maison Lancome line. I just can't stand that a lot of these were discontinued because these are, a lot of them could be, you know, considered masterpiece fragrances. They're really so beautifully crafted, including this one. You do have to be a woody patchouli lover. You have to love an earthy aromatic tone to a fragrance. This one is long lasting and projecting. And it reminds me don't tear up, Veronica. It reminds me so much of my mother and the fragrances she would wear in the 80s and 90s. My mother, God bless her, is still alive and kicking. My mom, y'all, my mom is saucy and spicy and she's given this life a run for her. It's money in her 70s. And so I said that like, you know, things were different, but no, she's with us. But it's just this nostalgic feeling of my, I'm going to get choked up, my mom coming home from work and she smelled beautiful from the fragrances that she wore. She wore all of the old school gems, you know, Shalimar, 
Obsession, Oscar de la Renta, Oscar, I think it was called, all of those big time fragrances, opium, like the original opium, friends, all of that. And I'm realizing now that probably a number of fragrances that she had had some strong patchouli note in it. And I didn't even realize it at the time, but it was like an old school patchouli that was nicely rounded with other amber accords and all of that. Anyway, I'm going down a whole rabbit hole. Let me tell you about the notes in this one uh, that stand out to me. Clary Sage, uh, Mate, think about like a, a tea note, right? Cinnamon essence, patchouli, tonka bean, and then resins, a benzoin resinoid. So this is, for me, it comes across like an amber patchouli fragrance with the patchouli just being this really sort of exotic player that gives this that 80s feel to it, this, that big bombastic fragrance feel. This is a really, really good one. And, you know, worth hunting down. I, I can't tell you where to get it. I just did a Google search and had a hard time uh, finding it. I didn't check on like eBay and Mercari and all of that. If you like an aromatic woody patchouli that's soft and feminine at the same time, if you can imagine all those things melding into one amalgam of a beautiful fragrance that has an old school feel with a modern feminine je ne sais quoi, patchouli aromatique is fantastic. The next category is my favorite blind buy. And I'm about to tell y'all a lie because I just remembered as I was picking this up to talk about it, that I actually sampled this <laughs> ahead of time because I had the discovery set of the new Nishane X line. So I'm telling y'all a lie. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that when I put the list together for this video, I forgot about that, but we're going to roll with it. Okay. For the sake of the show, the show must go on. <laughs> and this is Ani X from Nishane. So the original Ani I have sold off, or is it still available on my Mercari? I don't remember. The link is below if you're interested in seeing what I have left for sale. A lot of fragrances um, have, have left that I've posted. But Ani X is, for me, a more wearable, rounder, softer, more polite version of the original Ani, which is spice on top of spice with vanilla in the background. I feel like this is vanilla forward with accompanying sweet spices and citrus. There's a nice, beautiful, soft, almost juicy citrus accord in here that plays really nicely with vanilla. And what this reminded me of when I wore it, I felt like I was wearing Black Opium Le Parfum, the new one that has the umpteen number of vanillas in it. It's a vanilla bomb, a beautiful, amazing fragrance that one is. I felt like I was wearing that accompanied with a beautiful sweet citrus and some nice spices. That's what this came across as to me. And I found it really, really nice, very wearable and lovely, particularly here in the cold winter. I don't think this is one that I would reach for in warmer weather because it is a bit of a powerhouse of a fragrance. It did last long on me. It lasted longer than maybe the sampling experience did. And I found it projecting. So interesting fragrance. I like it. And it's of the ones that I tried in December, my favorite sort of blind buy. It wasn't really blind, but we'll keep it in this category. In the category of not a safe blind buy, this one is actually on my husband's shelf. I purchased it for him and he liked it because he smelled it on a colleague at a conference and was just like super, super enamored with the scent coming off of this person and wanted to have it for himself. And I'm glad that we got it. And sometimes I sneak and spray it myself, although I will say it would be a tough fragrance for many people to wear because it is very unique and very different. And this is Oud Essential from Guerlain. This is from their, what is it, the line called here, y'all? Le Absolu, Le Absolu Dorient? Not that that matters. <laughs> The bottles that look like this, this is actually a dark green, like a Kelly green that doesn't show up on camera well. And yes, this is a woody oud with this beautiful frankincense, a very clean, smooth, luxurious smelling frankincense in here. This also has a background of a really smooth, like a buttery leather that was really nicely worn in. So imagine that like a lambskin leather coat, that beautiful, soft, leathery smell accompanied by frankincense and this woody, oody, beautiful scent. This is really, really nice. Fantastic for winter. Not a feminine fragrance. This, I would say, is mostly in masculine territory, although I think the daring among you would consider this to be unisex, and it is glorious and luxurious. Very elegant smell. My husband was not wrong. He has a good nose, so him smelling it on someone else and then liking it for himself. Yay. Glad that this is in his collection, which means it's also in my collection. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to the overhyped category. Do not throw tomatoes because I still really like this fragrance. I think it's pretty fabulous. But if I'm honest, it probably smells a little bit like a Bath and Body Works. Body, is that what you call it? Bath and Body Works? Why do I always get that confused with whatever the name of that home store is? Bed Bath and Beyond. For some reason, I get them confused. Bath and Body Works, like a spray, which, hey, they've got some really nice, beautiful sprays or maybe a Victoria's Secret kind of spray. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of, how do you pronounce it? Was it Pear Glaze, Glaze uh, from Victoria's Secret? Remember, we all wore that back in the late 90s. You know you did. I did. <laughs> that combined with some fruity spray from Bath and Body Works. But I do like it. But for the price tag, y'all, you know, it's the Chronic Rouge Extreme from Byron Parfums. Now, a number of people have criticized this line of fragrances, saying they do smell a little bit like, you know, young, fruity, sweet fragrances that our younger ladies, you know, might wear out there and buy from, from, from Bath and Body Works. And yes, that's true. This is really good. It is very fruity and sweet. It's got this beautiful, like a raspberry pear combination. Is there caramel? Let me check. I'm not seeing caramel, but I get some sort of sticky sweetness like that. Whipped cream, it is very much a creamy, fruity fragrance. It has a spicy note of cinnamon, spicy notes and cinnamon, <laughs> and sandalwood and some other, some other notes. But you know, by and large, this is a sweet, fruity, creamy fragrance. I don't get a lot of longevity out of this. I would say half a day, moderate, and it's a nice little scent bubble, not super projecting. So just know that it is good, but for the several hundred dollars price tag for this, you maybe want it to smell a little bit more distinct, but no regrets. I still, I still love it. In the hidden gem category, I talked about this, I think in the last New Beauties video, I don't quite remember, but it's Rose and Honey from Michael Malool. I just adore the color of this bottle. I want everything in my life to be like this nudie pink. I think it's so, so pretty, so ladylike, so dainty. The fragrance is too, it's very much this soft, subtle rose, bright rose. It's a lot, it reminds me a lot of uh, lychee rose. They're similar, except this has that champagne. So it makes it a little bit more sort of bubbly and effervescent. This I would say is grounded a little bit more than this one, which is light and bubbly and flirty. This is a little bit more grounded with a honey note and vetiver, a little tiny bit of woodiness in the background. So it's a bit rounder, if you will, whereas that other one stays lighter, fresher, more uplifting. This has a little tiny bit more base to it, maybe like an older sister of that one or something. Fresh, bright, fills up a space and has other people asking what you're wearing because it's it's an alluring fragrance in a happy way. This is this is bright and fresh, um, like I said, with a little bit of depth from those notes and a real winner, pretty long lasting and has a nice projection into the room. Great, you know, year round fragrance, but really would recommend for late spring into summer into early fall and something I would not hesitate to wear to a work event. Okay, so we're going to go to my low three for the month, middle and top three. And in my low three, I really regret to say this about this fragrance. When I first purchased it, I wasn't in love with it. I liked it and I've kept it because it is part of a line of fragrances that I just absolutely adore most of them from. And so I'm talking about Burning Rose from Carolina Herrera. I am not entirely sure, but I think this will be going up on my Mercari, not because it's not a great fragrance. It is. It's a beautiful rose fragrance with an incense -y, smoky touch to it. I didn't get the smoke when I first tried it. I thought it was just like this pale rose, but it has since developed, if you will, or maybe my relationship with it is different and that I smell it differently. And the reason that it's in the bottom three is because when I first spray it on, I'm like, oh, this is a comfortable, familiar, really pretty smell. And then it just, for me, gets slightly boring th during the day, slightly boring. And if I'm going to reach for a rose fragrance, I prefer to reach for something else, like a couple of the ones that I've mentioned or a couple of the ones that I will mention. And so this is very, as the kids would say today, this feels to my nose a little mid. <laughs> in terms of a rose fragrance. It feels mid. The bottle is beautiful. The opening of this is really beautiful. It does have some lasting power during the day. It gets softer to the skin than when it first opens. And I like it, but I think I like others more enough to maybe pass this along to a new home. So that's Burning Rose. And then I had a little travel spray of the next one that I ordered after I originally sampled it. And I took that on a work trip with me and I regretted it. I did not want to wear this anymore. <laughs> 
And I'm going to tell you why. It's Dulcis and Fundo by Profumum Roma is the name of the brand. And this is supposed to be a bright, happy citrus vanilla fragrance. A lot of folks love it, including a lot of you out there that it you know, performs well on you. You adore it. It behaves on you. It didn't behave on me. I like the opening. I did get a lot of vanilla and what I consider to be like, a, remember the Smarties? I don't, I don't know why I said remember, like they're still around. People still eat Smarties, the little candies, the round ones with the powderiness. It gives me that in citrus form with vanilla. And so the opening is fun. And then it just got really sort of funky on me during the day to the point where I didn't like what I was smelling. It was like a mess, a mess on my skin. So, you know, sometimes things just don't work out for you and that's okay. So this was low for me for sure. And I'm glad I didn't purchase a full bottle of this one. Then third here is a fragrance that I've worn a few times. And recently when I wore it, it felt nice to me. And then that was it. So I don't have any problems with this fragrance, but there were other fragrances that really belonged in the middle and the top category, kind of beat this out. So this is from Moresque, The Secret Collection, and this is Jasminisha, which does give you jasmine. There's a little bit of fruity, uh, some fruity notes, a fruity nuance to it, a ginger note that brightens this up, vanilla, there's amber, there's a little bit of woodiness in the base. I would say it's a jasmine amber fragrance with ginger and some fruitiness mostly is the description. I think I wanted this to be stronger, more projecting, um, have more of a presence. It's a little bit on the softer end. I don't have any problems with that. That's fine. Sometimes you want to reach for a fragrance like that. I have more distinct jasmine fragrances in my collection that probably capture my heart and attention more, but this is a fine fragrance. And so it's going nowhere. I'm keeping it on my shelf. I'll probably wear it another time or two and then make a decision as to whether it will be like a lifer or one of those that kind of rotates out of the collection. Jasmineisha, pretty fragrance, no problems with it, just to be clear, but there were others that went into other categories. And so this little, little pretty thing is in low. So actually, I told another fib, it, I don't have a middle category, I have a top 10. I'm so sorry, I thought I had a middle category. Uh, but I'm looking at my notes again here. And no, these are in the top 10, meaning these are all super duper good. The first one is a combination and I'm not sure who to credit this to. And I mentioned this in that video where we did like the perfume safari, we went through all the shelves and picked out the one that was capturing my attention for the day. It is the combination of Angel Share, which you all know is a boozy, spicy, woody, cinnamony, sweet bomb of a fragrance and Nomad from Bond Number no. 9, which is rosy, oody, fruity. There was something about this combo. You know what this smells like? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is giving me vibes of Syrah from Tiziano Terenzi. Not identical, but similarities between those two. Okay, so these two together were just really deep. Think about deep, woody, spicy, rosy, boozy, all, all at the same time. And it worked. Somehow it worked. This was a bomb of a fragrance. My husband loved this and chased me around while I wore this combo. So this is a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Someone or some ones out there talked about this either in their video or in comments. I know I saw it out there. I apologize. I'd like to credit people when I see creativity out there. And so whoever suggested this, thank you. I owe it to you. I've talked about this fragrance quite a lot and just adore it to no end. And it is Victoria's Secret Bear. Love the bottle, love the whole aesthetic of this. It is violet and sandalwood and mandarin orange. So it's bright and it's cool and it's fresh and it's clean and it's delicate and it's, it's clean and it's clean and it's clean and it's every day is just... <laughs> It's super duper good, y'all. It's hard to go wrong with this. And I know a lot of you out there like it. You've left me comments to that effect. And so this is a winner. Next is one of my lifers. I This fragrance does things to me. It is so beautiful. Not for everyone. A number of you find this super cloying and unbearable. And in fact, there was a time that I thought the same. And the more I wore it, the more I just grew to understand it. And we have a relationship. We see each other. <laughs> This is Narciso, the white cube, which I understand is discontinued. And who made that dumb decision, if it's true? What a glorious fragrance. You have to be a gardenia lover and you have to love, love musk and woodiness together. Those are the dominant notes. There's a little bit of rose here that accompanies the fragrance, but by and large, it's a musky gardenia with woodiness. And this is probably for me, when I think of femininity, and I think of exuding what makes me feel the most womanly, like those characteristics, 
a fragrance like this comes to mind. It is so, so pretty, so strong. It is a very strong fragrance, very projecting, super long lasting. This is the kind of fragrance that you spray your knees and that's it. That's it. D-A-S-I-T. That's it. Don't go spraying yourself head to toe. People are going to hate being around you. But if you spray like the bottom half of your body a little bit, two, three sprays, that'll waft up and just be really captivating for people. Very, very luxurious, feminine, beautiful fragrance. Powerful, powerful, musky, woody. Some people feel like it's very powdery. It does in some situations, it might come across like that. I would not dare wear this in the heat of the summer, although I have worn it in the heat of the summer. <laughs> not a good idea. I almost wore this. This was my second choice for my wedding, which was high 80s and heavily humid on a riverbank in Virginia. Have you been to Virginia in the summer? It can be like stifling heat and humidity. Alien won out. Can you believe that? That was my wedding fragrance. This was a contender as well. Mm, love it. Then there is another Michael Malul. Michael Malul had a moment in December in my life. And this is one of the more original ones. It's called Atara. The bottle looks like this. I've gone through a bit of this. This is super sweet. I think it's black currant, and maybe there's pear or those kinds of really sweet fruits in here. A lot of vanilla, fruity vanilla, deep, like deep, dark fruit. Okay, think of overripened berries, that kind of sweet fruitiness to this. This is nicely lasting and projecting. And I think both very feminine and very sexy as well. Great date night fragrance for those intimate evenings. Oh, just beautiful. People don't talk about this. When it first came out, there were a few folks that talked about it. And then, you know, as happens on YouTube and in spaces like this where there's constant product getting pushed out, people sometimes forget about the beauties of the past. This is one of those like forgotten loves, I think on YouTube. Really, really. Good. And then friends, I know this one is getting a lot of playtime here on YouTube. Speaking of new releases, it's not new, but it was newly released. And someone told me that it is like re-released every year around the holidays. I don't know the history of it, but Ginger Biscuit from Jo Malone, which I mentioned is a good fragrance for a time when you don't want to be the center of the show because of your fragrance, but you want to smell nice and you want to mesh in with the surroundings. So that said, this was my Christmas morning scent when we went downstairs to open presents. You know, everybody's still in their Christmas pajamas. We haven't showered yet. We've just gathered around the tree in the early morning hours to open presents. And so this smells very much like a ginger snap cookie, or uh, for me, it smells even more like a snickerdoodle which is like a vanilla cookie with a light sprinkling of cinnamon and other similar notes. It is a light fragrance and it's very fleeting and it's not long lasting. So it's perfect for that type of thing. And then later on the day on Christmas, I wore the gorgeous Ojan from Parfums and Marley, which is like a lot like Angel Share, but even deeper, boozier. It has a really distinct, strong honey note that I didn't pick up when I first tried this. I was like overwhelmed with like the cinnamon aspects of this, the ambery boozy tones, if you will. I don't even know if there's booze in this, but something like that. But here more recently, I am picking up a really sort of sticky honey note here. This was my morning fragrance on Christmas day. We opened presents, I showered, and then I put this on and layered this over it to give it even more spicy, airy, fun, sugary cookie flair. I smell so good. That's the end of the story. That's it. You all know that Amouage is having a really big moment in my life in 2023. I have fallen in love with the house and I wore one of the beauties, uh, Amwa Am Amwash. Amwash. Blossom Love, Blossom Love. And as I mentioned before, there's a gorgeous dupe of this called Janoon Noir. No, lies. Janoon Rose, Janoon Noir. <laughs> Janoon Noir is a dupe for Dama Bianca. Really good too. Anyway, someone recently purchased a dupe from Mercari from me, and I think it's one of you, a viewer, so I hope that you love it. It should be arriving at your house as you're watching this video. Hey, girl, hey, or hey, guy, hey, whoever bought it. This is Amaretto, so you get this beautiful almond liqueur, cherry blossom, vanilla, creaminess. It's really, really good. It is mega powerful, like boom, super strong. The fragrance smells how the bottle looks. Imagine this creamy, almost powdery even, can you have powder on top of cream? Imagine that. Pinkness. Have you smelled cherry blossoms? They're light and they're fresh. It's almost like a rose meets a cherry smell, like rose and cherry combined together. Oh, so good. 
really long lasting, really projecting, beautiful fragrance, lovely bottle. This is strong, very, very feminine fragrance, very feminine. This could have been in the biggest surprise because every time I smell this, I get something a little bit different from it. And I've heard that from other people here on YouTube as well. This is Kayali Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. And it tells you the notes on the back, but honestly, friends, I can't say it smells like much of that except maybe the whipped cream and the marshmallow, kind of, sort of. There's definitely a creaminess to this fragrance that I just adore. I do get like this deep nuttiness. I can't say that it's hazelnut though. If anything, I would say it gives me like a little bit of a marzipan feel, like a crushed creamy almond marzipan with whipped cream on top and some soft perfumey notes, maybe even like that tonka bean, deep vanilla sweet feel. It's a really tough fragrance to explain, except that it's sweet and it's fluffy and it's marshmallow goodness, like marshmallow creamy goodness in a perfumey way. And it works and it lasts a long time. This one went on and on for the whole day. Can really fill up a space, so be careful with overspraying. I've seen people go to town on this one. I think a little goes a long way with this beauty. And then a fragrance you're going to see soon in my end of year awards. I have a small obsession with this fragrance. It's Ombre Tabac from Daniel Hosier. And I describe this as a ladies tobacco fragrance. For those of you that are intimidated by tobacco because you associate it with masculine fragrances and you don't wanna smell like a man. This one <laughs> is beautifully unisex with some feminine touches. In fact, I would say it leans slightly into feminine territory, wearable by anyone, anytime. This is so beautiful. Good. It has a heaping dose of really beautiful resinous amber, like a sticky amber even in it. And I would say crushed wet tobacco leaves, like ugh, the sweetness. If you've, if you've been around tobacco farms, friends, or if you've been uh, in a place where it has tobacco leaves before the tobacco is like cured, before it's dried out for the leaves, maybe that's a better way to put it. It's the wetness of fresh tobacco for me here, that resinous amber and this lovely vanilla. This is really good, long lasting, and it just, it gives me all the good feels. Beautiful fragrance. And we have two more friends. The next one, so Kerosene apparently had a moment in December too, because this next one is from Kerosene and it is The Gorgeous Unknown Pleasures. This has been kicking around YouTube for a while now. This is, ooh, lemon goodness, lemon, vanilla, and tea. Let me see, there's gotta be some other notes that we can talk about here, but that's what I pick up. Oh yeah, there's caramel and honey and tonka bean, at least according to Fragrantica. Those notes are not always correct, by the way. So yes, there is like a sticky sweetness, but I would say more than anything, a really sweet vanilla, a really sweet lemon, a beautiful tea note. This is really nice. Another one that's long lasting. I love the really light nature of this. So it has substance and strength and power, but it's also, there's something light and bright and uplifting. Maybe it's the, the citrus that's here with the lemon. And it just works and it's lovely year round, lovely year round, very feminine fragrance in my opinion, long lasting. And it's just, it's good, good. This is nice. Rounding out the top 10 list is one of my favorite sandalwood fragrances. I did a sandalwood video a few weeks back. Please check that out if you haven't already. And if you like sandalwood or you're curious about it, this is Santal Vini from The Seven Virtues. This is a clean brand if that's of interest to you. And for this to be a clean brand, this fragrance lasts a good amount of time. It takes me through a good work day, not into the evening. You're not gonna get all the way up into nighttime. Although wait a minute, because I sprayed this on in the morning on one day while I still had my robe on before I got dressed. And it transferred to the robe, apparently. When I put that robe on the next day, my husband still smelled it on me and came across the room to ask me what I was wearing. And it was this from the day before. This is a beautiful, lovely, very smooth sandalwood fragrance with a nice dose of vanilla, but it's mostly like a woody fragrance with a touch of spiciness to it and a nice vanilla. Some people pick up a powdery nuance in the fragrance. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. For the most part, it's more creamy than powdery. For me, at least it was this last time. I don't love the labels on these bottles. How do y'all feel about it? That's part of the reason I didn't mess with the new Cherry Ambition. I just didn't like the label. I know that's petty, but it is the truth. But anyway, this is one of my favorite sandalwood fragrances and in my top 10 for the month. So friends, that wraps up the December Fragrance Awards. Before you go, please do tell us what was your favorite fragrance from December. Let us know in the comments. We always wanna hear about new gems and your experiences with them. And we'd love to hear your comments on the fragrances that we talked about today. 
Stay tuned for the end of the year fragrance awards tomorrow. Remember to enter the giveaway. If you are interested, you got to go check out that video. I also have my top 10 fragrances for life coming up, a new beauties video coming up and a special occasion fragrance video coming up too. And much, much more. Mwah. Love y'all. Take care. Happy new year.